Hey guys, how's it going? Mr Mitchell here. This is the fourth in a series of six videos where we look at the key definitions that you need to know for the higher physics exam. In this video we cover the definitions for the electricity topic and I'd recommend that you make your own flashcards from these definitions. You can do this by writing down the word or term on one side and then the meaning or the definition on the other side. So let's get started. We start with direct current also known as DC and this is when current flows in only one direction at all times. For example, a battery is a DC source. Next we have alternating current, also known as AC, and this is when current changes direction every fraction of a second, so the current goes back and forth. For example, the mains is an AC source. Moving on we have electromotive force, also known as EMF, and this is the energy supplied to each coulomb of charge which passes through a source. And notice that this is identical to the definition for voltage or potential difference from National 5. Next we have internal resistance, and this is the resistance that a power supply or battery has when current is flowing in a circuit. Lost volts is our next one, and this is the energy wasted inside an electrical source due to its internal resistance when current is drawn from the source. So because you'll often see a battery as the source, it's basically just the energy that is wasted inside the battery due to the internal resistance. Moving on we have terminal potential difference which can be shortened to TPD, and this is the voltage available at the terminals of an electrical source. That is, is the voltage remaining after the lost volts has been subtracted from the EMF. Next we have an ideal source, and an ideal source is a source with no internal resistance, i.e. it has only an EMF, and this is different to a real source which does have an EMF and an internal resistance. Short circuit is our next one, and this says that when a battery is short circuited, for example by connecting it to itself, the load resistance R is effectively zero. Since the terminal potential difference VTPD is equal to IR from Ohm's law, this means that VTPD, the terminal potential difference, must also be zero. So for a short circuit you should remember that the load resistance R and the terminal potential difference VTPD are both zero. A short circuit can be dangerous as with no load resistance current can become incredibly high. So for example if you take your battery and connect it to itself, over time the battery will heat up, and that's because there's nowhere for the electrons to deposit their energy other than the battery itself. Next we have open circuit, and an open circuit is a circuit in which no current is flowing, i.e. the switch is open. And this is opposite to a closed circuit in which current is flowing, i.e. when the switch is closed. Moving on, for capacitors we have something called capacitance, and this is the charge stored per volt of potential difference across a capacitor. And remember this can be seen from the equation for capacitance, which says that C equals Q over V. So we've got the Q part being the charge stored, and the V part being the volt, so it's charge per volt, or Q over V. Capacitance is also given by the gradient of the line on a QV graph, i.e. a graph of charge versus potential difference. Our next definition is for a conductor, and this is a material that allows electrons to flow through it and therefore conduct electricity, for example metals and carbon. Next we have an insulator, and this is a material that does not allow electrons to flow through it and therefore does not conduct electricity, for example rubber, plastic and glass. Moving on we have a semiconductor, and this is a material that behaves as an insulator when pure, but can be made to conduct by adding an impurity or exposing it to heat and light etc. For example, silicon and germanium are common semiconductors. Moving into band theory terms now, we have the conduction band, and this is the band above the valence band. Electrons can jump into this band from the valence band when they have enough energy. Our next one is valence band, and this is the band that the outermost electrons can occupy. Electrons will jump from this band into the conduction band when excited. Next we have doping, and this is the addition of an impurity atom to an intrinsic semiconductor or pure semiconductor during manufacture in order to increase its conductivity or reduce its resistance. Moving on we have the PN junction diode. This is the junction formed when a piece of P-type material is grown together with a piece of N-type material. And remember a diode will only let current flow through it in one direction. Remember PN junctions can be connected in forward bias which is when the negative terminal of the cell is connected to the N-type and the positive terminal of the cell is connected to the P-type. Forward bias reduces the electric field in the PN junction and this allows the material to conduct. 
Reverse bias, on the other hand, is when the negative terminal of the cell is connected to the p-type and the positive terminal of the cell is connected to the n-type. Reverse bias increases the electric field in the p-n junction and therefore electrons and holes cannot flow so there's no conductivity. Next we have LED which stands for Light Emitting Diode and this is a forward bias p-n junction diode that emits photons due to recombination and remember recombination is just the term given to when the electrons in the conduction band of the n-type material fall into the holes of the p-type material that are in the valence band and this emits light in the form of photons. Next we have a solar cell which in a sense is sort of opposite to the LED and this is a p-n junction that produces a potential difference when photons are absorbed or in other words when light is instant on a solar cell it produces a voltage. Lastly we have the photovoltaic effect and this is the name given to the production of a voltage when a solar cell absorbs instant photons i.e. light. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching, if you made it to the end I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.